Hey guys, Kyle Sutton here with the Your Pittsburgh Neighbor and Better the Berg Show. Um, we do a show where we talk to local business owners, local nonprofits, just share with you what's going on around Pittsburgh. Hopefully introduce you to some, some good people who got some good things going on. And today I am at Off the Hook Exotic Pets in Coriopolis. A um, number of you mentioned them as a, as a really cool store, so I wanted to come out and meet them. And I'm talking to, to George and Desiree, the owners here. And uh, we're just going to learn about what they, what they have to offer. So uh, welcome, guys. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Happy to be here. Okay, so uh, tell me about your store. This is really one of the coolest stores I've, I've been in, I think. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, awesome. That was our goal. Uh, when we opened, we wanted people to feel like they were coming into our home, okay. uh, not a store. Just, you know, yeah. it's, it's we want to have that welcoming environment. It just so happens we have really cool stuff for sale here at our home. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, George and I met about 10 years ago. Um, he's been in uh, reptile rescue most of his life. Um, he's dealt with venomous snakes, um, he's dealt with uh, some of the larger species that most people don't realize get as big as they actually get. Sure. Um, sure. So he's been in a position where he's really been able to help out with the reptile community. He's yeah. a very, very well known and, and loved and admired human in that um, area. Okay. Um, yeah. And when we got together, I'd been in, in rescue and, and animals most of my most of my <laughs> life, um, even as a kid. Um, so when we kind of got together, it was sort of like it, it, it was definitely a, a spark in Flint because we, you know, we, we definitely caught fire, and, and here we are. Hey, good stuff. <laughs> good stuff. So. Um, uh, I, I look around. I see. I see fish. I see birds. I see reptiles. Tell, um, who, who comes in looking for an exotic pet? Don't tell me. Um, a lot of people actually. Yeah. Um, okay. Mostly uh, for people that can't have cats and dogs. Okay. Um, reptiles, fish, and birds are great alternatives. Sure. Um, it, it, we all tend to have that nurturing need in us to, to care for something other okay. than ourselves. Um, so it gives people an opportunity. Reptiles are great for that in that they stay where you put them. They're not going to urinate on your furniture. Okay. They're not right, going right. to chew your walls. They're you know what Plus, I mean. They're Pretty passive. And nowadays, there's, there's a lot more technology involved okay. in keeping reptiles and amphibians. Yeah. Uh, years ago, when I was a kid, you couldn't find anything. You go to uh -huh. a pet store and say, "Hey, I need a, a mouse." Right. Well, what for? For my pet snake. And they look at you like I have two heads. Right. <laughs> why would you have a snake? Well, uh -huh. Do you have anything to heat a snake's cage? No. Well, why would you need to heat a snake's cage? Okay. Most pet stores didn't have any information at all, and a lot of pet stores today still aren't set up to take the sure. bites. They'll carry a few small snakes, a couple small lizards. They're limited to what their wholesaler brings them. Okay. And the wholesaler is limited to what sells fast. Yeah, so right. So they, they right. want wild caught reptiles, small, easy reptiles. Okay. Uh, they'll get in something kind of crazy once in a while, and a lot of times the employees of those pets will come here to they advise don't to on it. how yeah. to care for the pet that they've been told okay. to do by their job. And that's one of the things you guys really, really focus on. You try to, to educate people when they come Absolutely. in so that they're not just walking out with a pet that they can't handle. Absolutely. Exactly. And we even provide that for people that aren't our customers. Okay. Um, for example, we've ended a lot of the local reptile shows. Mm -hmm. um, and say somebody gets a ball python from, from another vendor. Um, usually the case is, is that vendor is... is you know, out of contact after you make that purchase. Uh -huh. um, so we, we're here to provide that education and the, the knowledge that those people need. Um, of course, along with our customers, we make sure they have everything that they need to um, to have physically for that animal, and as well as the knowledge. Um, we have a Facebook page, and we're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Wow. Yeah. Um, so people message us all the time with questions. They can send us videos if their animal's having an issue. They want to show us what it looks like. Okay. Um, they can do that. Um, we're pretty quick to respond most of the time. Yeah, great. No, we were. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That, that yeah, no problem, really no good. problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, do you guys have favorites? I hate to put you on the spot, but do you, have, do you what, what do you uh, love working with the most? Well, I, I've been working with venomous snakes for wow, okay. about 20, 25 years now. Yeah. Uh, I'm really into them. Uh, we have a designer rattlesnake here in the store. We have a designer cobra. We have a saw scale viper. Um, I just really enjoy working with the venomous species. Cool. Yeah. I don't do it as hardcore as I used to. Uh -huh. um, back in the days when the crocodile hunter was real big, a lot of people were getting into snakes and they'd buy themselves a corn snake or a king snake and mm -hmm. a ball python and next thing you know they're like, well, I want to do what Steve Irwin does. I want to have a, a puff adder. I want to have a cobra. Yes. Next thing you know, they talked to somebody into selling one of those and then about a couple months later they realized the error in their ways yeah. and they right. call the Pittsburgh Zoo and uh, her daughter book of the zoo would always say, well, you got to call George Diaz okay. and give him my number. So you're the go-to go, man. Go, yeah, that's great. We've taken a lot of Pittsburgh because there is an ordinance in uh, Pittsburgh city limits against venomous. Gotcha. So we were able to remove some of those from homes. Uh, we've had people that passed away with reptiles mm -hmm. and gone to their home and, and removed the reptiles from them. Uh, 
But other than the venomous snakes, I mean, I love all reptiles. I, I'm a huge fan of the colubrid family of snakes, which are your typical snakes. Okay. It's like your black rat snake from around here, water snakes, garter snakes. Okay, right, right. Uh, around the world, there are some fascinating colubrids, and we usually have a few on display here to store and for sale. Mm -hmm. And, and who do you have here with yeah, you? Yeah, this, is, this <laughs> is my buddy Polo. Um, Polo will be three in February. Okay. Um, he was one of our uh, rescue, rehab, rehome uh, uh -huh. missions um, who's kind of turned into a, more or less a permanent resident here because right. he absolutely loves me. Um, <laughs> feelings mutual, buddy. Um, he's, um, his owner had to uh, relinquish him because uh, where she lived, uh, neighbors were complaining about noise. Mm -hmm. um, so it was kind of either get rid of the birds or find somewhere else to live, and that's not always an easy thing to do. Um, one of the things that I really love about this store, I mean, I, I love the birds. I love working with them. I love doing the behavioral rehab. Okay. It's, it's incredible to watch an animal that nobody can touch get to this point. Um, yeah, you know what I mean? It's, it's just, it's fantastic. Um, that being said, I also love working with the reptile rescues as well. Um, some okay. of the guys that we get in um, have serious upper respiratory issues, skin infections, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I really enjoy being able to, it's sort of like painting a room. Like, you know what I mean? It's right. not a huge thing that you're doing, but it's such a huge difference when you're done. And it's, I, I just, I, I absolutely am passionate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's fantastic. Um, and I mean, a lot of the times it's certainly not abuse or neglect. It's just people are uninformed right. and they don't know where to get that information. Yeah. So along with providing Providing that information and education to our customers and to just people off the street, um, we also provide a rescue rehab rehome service, and that's for any animal, including birds, fish, reptiles, um, really just about anything that's legal to own in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, we'll we'll work with. Okay. Well, yeah, and, and what an asset then, because I mean, the most rescue shelters cats and dogs, that yeah. sort of thing, yeah. but where do you go if you have something? Exactly, yeah. exactly, and unfortunately with birds, a lot of the time, um, even like some of these guys, and even the most the most prepared people, um, for example, these guys can live 80 to 110 years. Mm -hmm. um, that's a long time. Like, he's only three. He's yeah. going to way outlive me. Um, wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah. He, like by a lot, so right. you know what I mean? And I'm young, I'm not, you know, I'm 36 sure. years old, So, yeah. but he's way out going to live me. So a lot of people that are prepared that have birds like this that are going to live a long time, mm -hmm. um, they'll, put, they'll put the bird in the will or whatever. The problem is, is if that bird doesn't know the person that it's going to, it's not going to be a smooth transition. Yeah. There's a lot that can go wrong. Um, we have a couple of birds. I know. We have a couple of birds that, are, um, that have plucked themselves because of stress. Um, and that's a huge issue, and that's just a self-mutilation thing. When you get a, an aggressive bird that doesn't know who you are, um, trying to lunge at your face and, and whatnot, and you don't know what you're supposed to be doing, um, we offer a couple of different services for people in that situation as well. So, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Um, so, I, I imagine, I mean, do you get people coming in with their kids curious? Oh, all the time. And, and so, and then how do you... Um, you, you can coach somebody on what, what would be appropriate, what Absolutely. might not be appropriate then. There's one yeah. of the few pet stores out there that I don't mind if they come to your petting zoo. Oh, cool. I've got customers <laughs> that come in here all the time. We've got regular kids from the neighborhood that uh -huh. come in. And they know where all the snakes are. They go right in, they start picking up snakes and yeah. hitting them. Even at the reptile shows, the first thing we ask people is, hey, who do you want to hold today? Like, you know, okay. anybody want to see? Right. Whereas uh, a lot of people in pet store situations, like, no, 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 mm -hmm. unless you're buying it, we really don't want to hand it around the reptile around okay. But I find that holding the animal and the kids interacting with the animal, especially for children, it's great because not only desensitizing them to that, uh -huh. but it's also great to learn what kind of a pet might work best for them. Okay. Yeah, which makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And people that go into a pet store looking to buy a bird are often the worst bird customers because they already have it in their head what they want to buy, mm -hmm. and they have it in their head what that bird's going to be like. Right. Whereas someone coming into a pet store, not really wanting to do any more than look around. Mm -hmm. to check out some cool animals. Might fall in love with a bird, might fall in love with a snake. I've had people fall in love with a snake that have never even considered having a snake before as a pet before they walked in here. Right. It's because the kid wanted to hold them next thing you know, mommy, mommy, check this out, and mom, no, mom's handling it, and she's like, well, this wasn't what I expected. Yeah, great, right, very right. nice animal. Next thing you know, they're a perfect reptile owner because they didn't expect something out of it that they weren't going to get. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, so, guys, so guys um, off the hook exotic pet, pets in Coriopolis. We have uh, George and Desiree. Um, they they know what they're talking about. They're they're experienced with these animals. They they care about them, and and they care about the customers coming in, making sure they're finding the right match. Um, they do pet rescue. This is it, it's a good spot. Come in and learn something. Um, if you're ready, come in and buy something too. Uh, uh, support local business. They're they're good people. Um, appreciate you watching, and we'll hope to hear from you soon. Check out the. The notes, I'll put their contact information, we'll link to their Facebook page, and uh, yeah, hopefully you make a connection. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks. Absolutely. Thanks.